it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and yes, it's Fun Friday! I'm here on the show, and we are going to have fun today, because we have a lot of news. We have a very busy weekend. We're going to talk about all of that news. And we are going to take your text messages, 425-780-7566, and your emails at f4wonline at gmail.com. And later today, we will take your phone calls, 1-800-878-PLAY, 1-800-878-7529. That is 1-800-878-7529. Don't bother calling yet. It'll be later. But I'm also on Threads, Instagram, and Cameo at F4W Online. Yes, Cameos you can grab. And uh, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. So we got a lot to get into here today, including update on Ronda Rousey. A significant life announcement, it says here. Her and her husband, Travis Brown, expecting their second child. So congratulations to Ronda Rousey. They're going to have another child. And in fact, we, uh, you know, we talked about this a while ago when she did that, uh, that appearance for Ring of Honor. And everybody was saying, oh, man, she's going to sign with AEW. She's going to sign with AEW. And I told you all she was not going to sign with AEW. And that is because I had heard that she had no interest in going back to wrestling. And she wanted to continue building her family. And so uh, now she's got another child on the way. So congratulations to her. Got the latest on Vince McMahon. And uh, John Cena talks about potentially going to London for WrestleMania. John Moxley update. Blood and Guts ratings. And uh, plenty more. So we're going to kick it off after the break, everybody. Stick around. Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live. Our uh, producer's internet died, and so uh, he couldn't do anything. So, uh, luckily, producer Jared is around to uh, get everything working, and I think uh, that's indicative of how the show's going to go today, here on Fun Friday. Fun Friday. Yeah, Fun Friday. We've got a lot of fun things going on here today. Oh, yeah. By the way, everybody that's listening right now uh, via audio means, whether it be podcast or radio or something like that, uh, it's the video stream that's gone down. Well, obviously, they know that because they're listening, you see. Well, if, it could be new to the process. If it had gone down, they wouldn't be listening right now. How many video subscribers do we have that cannot understand to this day, even though that this has been a terrestrial radio show slash internet radio show? They don't want to know. 30 years. That's that the they answer. They, no don't, they don't want the answer. Let's talk about the bad news, and then we can get going with the, the good news. we just did. The legal team of Vince McMahon filed a motion on Thursday. Oh. This is the latest on Vince and Janelle Grant. To lift a court-ordered stay of the Janelle Grant lawsuit. The suit, filed against himself, WWE and John Laurinaitis, was put on pause in mid-June by Judge Jeffrey Meyer after both sides agreed to do so based on a request from the Department of Justice as a federal investigation into McMahon continues. The earliest the suit could resume would be December 11, 2024. However, Vince's team is taking a different tactic. His lawyer stated... In a statement to Brandon Thurston, as well as us, in fact. Today's motion is in response to Ms. Grant's flagrant violation of the federal stay order. After telling the federal court that she would pause her lawsuit, Ms. Grant immediately violated the stay order, seeking one-sided discovery for her own benefit. Her lawyer told the media the information sought in the new Connecticut state action is, quote, to assist in our claims in the federal action. We are asking the federal court to ensure that plaintiff abides by the court's order, and if she does not, that civil contempt and financial sanctions may result. So essentially what happened is, you know, they're doing a, a federal investigation into Vince, and both sides agreed, we will pause the lawsuit for six months. So after pausing, Janelle Grant's attorneys then submitted a discovery, a pre-action discovery petition against Carlin Kolker, Peak Wellness and uh, CEO owner, 
Carlin Kolker, seeking medical records related to Grant's treatment at the clinic as it concerns the lawsuit against WWE, McMahon, and Laurinaitis. So they're saying, hold on a second, we all agreed to pause, and then you immediately sought more information. So what he's asking is for it to be paused. And my guess is that they will, in fact, probably grant that because both sides did agree to a pause, and then her attorney did ask for more. So my guess is that that's what's going to happen. Unless, you know, she can find a way to say, well, you know, this is unrelated to the lawsuit. I want these records for my own information to find out what's going on. Then they may allow her to to get those. But by stating that it is is in relation or concerning the uh, sex trafficking lawsuit, I presume they're going to say, well, no, it's stayed right now through December. So anyway, I believe that's what's going on here. And uh, that's the latest on that. I mean, technically, it should be quiet until December. Yeah. There's, it's going to be, you know, intermittently we're going to get things like we've gotten where she, you know, and her lawyers and her team went after Coker here for her medical records and now WWE volleying back. But as long as the Southern District of New York and the feds are looking at this, it's going to be, again, pretty quiet until more of that sort of stuff starts to happen and those starts of wheels start to move whenever they do. WWE is talking about going to London for WrestleMania. Several news outlets reported Thursday, London Mayor Sadiq Khan had a surprise meeting Thursday afternoon at City Hall with Nick Khan, no relation, obviously, and Paul Triple H Levesque about the possibility of bringing the two-night event to London for the first time ever. Mayor has been public in his desire to bring major international sports events to London, of which WrestleMania was included, posted on X about that desire in April, to which Levesque replied, let's talk. So here's what's really interesting about this story, okay? What's that? So it's one thing when you run in Saudi Arabia or whatever, and the show starts at 11 a.m., and you just watch it whenever. Because I know, like, some people, the reality is this. You know, those those shows that start at 9 a.m., they don't do as well as the shows that start in the traditional time slot. They just don't. And often people will watch them in the traditional time slot anyway, as opposed to watching them live. So one of the things with the biggest show of the year is, do we want to start WrestleMania at 9 a.m.? And I don't think they've ever, and I think that's the reason they've never done a WrestleMania in London. They don't want to start at 9 a.m. Wait a second. Wait, you wouldn't have to start at 9 a.m. This this is what I'm getting to, Mike. Thank you. So tonight, uh, tomorrow night, there is a UFC you pause. in Manchester. Okay? Mm-hmm. It is starting live in the traditional U.S. time slot. So the fans going to the Manchester UFC, the show is starting at like 11 p.m. or midnight and going until about 5 a.m. Yeah. So, you it's know, been done. They're, they're getting people there to do that. So my guess is that if WWE does a WrestleMania in London, I think that based on how uh, tomorrow's UFC is probably done in terms of ticket sales, etc., my guess is that they're going to say... The show starts at 11 p.m. and is going to run until 5 a.m. Both nights. So it is in the normal time for viewers here in the U.S. I can't say that's 100%, but I think that's that's the idea here. Because it's quite the coincidence that uh, they're there yesterday with that Manchester show Saturday starting at 11 p.m. U.K. time. I think that's where we're going here. We got a, what, a five-hour difference during WrestleMania season? Is that what the difference is between the East Coast and... Well, East uh, Coast, it's five, and West Coast, it's eight. Because you can start the show. Look, you can say it's going to be a late night for those of you who are live at the show and start it at 8 o'clock. That would be 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific. It is not ideal for those of us in the States, but we can suck it up. I'm sure Peacock and, you know, the WWE Network only cares about the numbers. When they're streamed, it doesn't matter when they are. So I don't 
think that it really I don't think that it much matters anymore as long as it's something like that. I don't think it will take away from the experience. You know, it's going to be interesting to see what indies do that weekend and what the whole feeling of the weekend has become over the last several years, you know, after more than that now with everybody that gloms onto it, how many places are going to be running, you know, side by side over in the UK and how does that change their scene? It's going to be really interesting, but I remember fans of Ricky Hatton having to stay up all night long and the shows would be aired on BBC five radio. I believe it was, and you could actually listen to it in the shows. They would be set at a time overnight because Showtime wanted to have them at 10 PM Eastern time and fans in Manchester ate it up. Now, granted, that was because Ricky Hatton was their hometown guy, but that was a party all the way into the morning and into the morning. They will do game. that same thing for WrestleMania. They could. They could. But I, you know, to me, there's a way you can do it where it doesn't, it's not so crazy. Again, to start at maybe eight o'clock, maybe you have to cut back on the pre-show, which is not a bad idea anyway. So there's, I think, ways you can do it where it's not too crazy. Well, we shall see. But I officially predict right now that they will be running at the traditional time, which, by the way, is four now, four Pacific, seven Eastern. So, yeah, we're talking like 11 o'clock. Is that right? 11 o'clock? Midnight? Start at midnight? About midnight. Yeah, yeah. that's a party. I'd do it. Yeah. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Except for VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer in the new Wrestling Observer Newsletter notes, John Moxley has been granted some time off from AW. We actually talked about this a few days ago. He's uh, not seriously injured. He's just taking time off. And uh, when he will be back is anybody's guess. He lost the belt to uh, Naito at the Forbidden Door show. And now is just uh, doing whatever. So he finally got his vacation after all this time. <laughs> well, good for him. Rest up. You know, he wasn't involved in anything that was... And granted, it was featured on the show, but it's not like his IWGP title adventures were that important, I don't believe, to AEW fans. So him going through that, now taking some time off, he can rest his mind, rest his body when he comes back. It can be a splash. It can be a big deal. I don't know how much, how long he's going to be taking off for, obviously, but it doesn't seem like he's, you know, figured into the all-out plans or the all-in plans. Doesn't mean that he can't be possibly in the mix for all-out because they're going to want to keep any momentum going for the two weeks leading into that show. So, all the best to him. Hopefully, everything's okay, and you know, hopefully, he's back soon. We have the blood and guts. Ratings for Wednesday night, 786,000 and a point two six. So the viewership is um, down slightly, but the 18 to 49 is, is pretty good. Third best rating they've done dating back to April 10th. Did go head-to-head -head with uh, Biden's address, although I don't think he went that long. As compared to 2023 which was a week later than Blood and Guts. So it's not a fair comparison exactly, but down 12.5% of viewers, 10.3% in 18 to 49. Down 17% and down 23% from the equivalent Blood and Guts. <laughs> Look, basically they're down about 25% overall and about 20% in their 18 to 49 category and that's been the way the trend has been going now for a long time and that's what they're trying to put the brake on and stop it seems as if they have now broken out of the doldrums now granted these were two shows that were heavily hyped and heavy, heavily gimmicked up so you know we'll see what happens next week but at least it's two shows pressing 800,000 as opposed to having five and then you know five in a row at least that were under 700,000 so hopefully they've broken out of that well, do you want to know how the Chris Jericho segment did how did it do I didn't see any of the quarters you didn't 
I did not actually. No, you got to go to WrestleNomics. Uh, or you can be my WrestleNomics right now. This should be a lot of fun then. Uh, the Jericho <laughs> match Langdon. with Minoru Suzuki did, in fact, grow. It went through two segments. It grew you from. Go through all of these? It went from 768 to 778. Mm hmm. And it did above average for that time slot. Normally, that time slot does around, it looks like about 725. It did 778, so it was a positive, Mike. Now, it did fall from the opening segment, which did 864, but that happens every week. And uh, it outdid the Hikaru Shida Britt Baker match, it outdid the Pac Boulder. Swerve Strickland, Darby Allen interview everything backstage. It outdid the Tony Storm segment. It outdid the Elite versus Team AW Blood and Guts quarter one. But then the last half hour of the show uh, did beat Jericho's segment. But uh, that was the only thing besides the opener. So that's just what it did. Dude, you're taking that as a big W. I'm not. Go I just, ahead, strap that I just one to knew your back like Jesus I and was, drag it through the I streets. I was hesitant to even bring it up today because I thought, oh, man, here he goes again. Oh, He's going to tell me I was a failure because it was only the third highest thing on the show. Mm. That's how it did. And so, hey, it see should. how angry the Twitch chat got. I'm not even going to go to YouTube. <laughs> hey, it should. He's a star. It should be that way. And, and we'll see what we'll see what happens next week. Again, if there's more interaction, which there seems to be between Minoru Suzuki and Shibata, probably leading into something a six man, you know, you talk about Sammy coming back and, and possibly being in the mix, depending on what they exactly want to do for all in, which I thought was going to be Hook and Jericho and Hook getting the title back, but maybe not. Maybe it's leading into having some sort of multiple man tag match or something like that, but that match didn't <laughs> didn't work for me, brother. As far as keeping my interest in what's going on between those two dudes, uh, Miko. And by the way, yes, by the way, yes, yes. Just Mike. because you know I'm an old man yelling at the cloud when it comes to AEW, their tag team division and their trios division, but especially their tag team division. Why not make Big Bill and the Bad Apple something in the tag team division? Like, what does it hurt to do that? Why can't you do two concurrent things? Why can't you get them over alongside Jericho, but not be minions, not be stooges, not just be goofs? Actually have them go out there, win a couple tag team matches, kick the outrunners in the balls, you know? Snap off the, the Boulder Bronson boys and their, you know, do all, kill them. Do something with them so they actually have a little bit more value and people get a little bit more out of this. Mike, you're not wrong, but there's a bigger issue. And that is we have... Tony Khan is the booker? Tag team champions who I don't think have defended the title a single time since they won them. Well... They, we have a tag team uh, that is supposed to be challenging for the tag team titles that won a shot at the tag team titles, I believe, two months ago... We still have not seen them get their title shot. We have a six-man division that, with all due respect, is in shambles. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It's I like I don't know either. I don't want to. I don't want to yell at clouds either. But let's let's think about. You know, one of the things that this company was built on was that tag team division. Yeah. They, they in the early years, they they actually headlined pay per views with world tag team title matches over the world heavyweight title. They headlined pay-per-views with the tag team titles. Then, you know, they had all of these amazing six-man matches, and all we wanted was six-man tag team titles. And it was put off, 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 and finally, they introduced the six-man tag team titles, and... What is going on with the division? Well, for a while, we had nine belts on the champions. Nine. We had the AW titles, the Ring of Honor titles, and the acclaimed pink titles for reasons unknown. They were all unified. The champions never defended. It was like, I don't even know what I don't even know what was going on. And then they one guy got injured, and so they had to strip everybody of the titles. 
even though there was precedent for just replacing an injured guy in a team from earlier or later last year, they stripped them of the titles. And in doing so, the pink titles vanish. The Ring of Honor tag team titles vanish. It's never once been explained on television why these belts have all vanished. I don't care about the pink titles because they're not real, but like, where are the Ring of Honor six-man titles? They've dropped off the face of the earth. Now the champions only have the AW six-man tag team titles. I don't think there's any teams in contention right now. The Bucks aren't defending the titles. The Bucks didn't get beaten by anybody at Blood and Guts to set up a tag team title match. I mean, listen, I'm a I'm a big fan of everybody involved, but like this has to be the all time worst it has ever been for the AW tag and six man titles, right? I would think so. And the answer, of course, is now going back to FTR and the Young Bucks. We've seen that a lot. What new spin are you going to put on this one? And I'm not complaining because you know the match is, you know, in the it's going to be great to watch. But are you going to have any, you know, feeling behind it? You're going to have any enthusiasm behind it? You're going to have it go somewhere, make it feel like it's going somewhere? Not just Dax talking about doing this for his daughter and Cash talking about stuff that was never brought up on TV. Like, this is how we're going to lead into this thing. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay. But. I remember way back, the whole reason that people wanted trios titles were because they had these great tag teams that happened to be a part of three-man units, and they had a bunch of them, and it's like, this is cool. They should actually just make it bad street rules in this promotion that's brand new. Have any members of a team go ahead. But then they decided, okay, we're going to have trios titles. Fantastic. And they have not been able to consistently book anything. And what's really frustrating is, as a guy that was a fan of tag team wrestling, I always go back to Slaughter and Kernoodle against Steamboat and Youngblood and, you know, Tully and Arn and the Rock and Roll and the Midnights and all that sort of stuff. You can make tag team wrestling main event wrestling. You can do that. The Funks, the Briscoes. You know, you can do that with teams. You just have to put the effort behind it and be serious about it and actually have a little bit of foundation to the division so when people beat people, it actually matters. But well, we actually it's a actually, lot to ask for. I have an update. So, on Battle of the Belts on Saturday night, we have three matches. We have Tony Storm versus Taya Valkyrie for no belt at Battle of the Belts. We have Willow Nightingale versus Deanna for the CMLL women's title. And they have added three of Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, Roderick Strong, or Wardlow. We don't know. Versus the winner of Dark Order versus Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erichs from Death Before Dishonor. And the winners will become the new Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions. This was just brought to my attention. There was no mention of this whatsoever on Dynamite. This is all new information. But we will have new Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions coming up on Saturday. Back in a moment, Observer Live. It's fun Friday. Yeah, it is. 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. Call now! Or you can text us at 425-780-7566. Or email me at f4wonline at gmail.com. What's on everybody's mind? We got Ring of Honor tonight. They added like a dozen matches yesterday. Mark Briscoe, Roderick Strong, world title. Athena versus Queen Aminata for the women's title. Mike Bennett and Matt Taven versus Ishii and Kyle O'Reilly for the tag titles. Atlantis Jr. defends the TV title against Leo Rush, Shane Taylor, Johnny TV, Brian Cage, and Lee Johnson in a survival of the fittest match. What does that even mean? Billy Starks defends the TV title against Red Velvet. Wheeler Yuta versus Lee Moriarty for the Pier title. Layla Hirsch and Diamante, Texas Death Match. The ROH six man tag team title eliminator match. The Beast versus Mortos. I'm sorry, The Beast Mortos versus Commander. And in the pre show, MXM make their Ring of Honor in ring debut. Who's MXM? Who's MXM? Former Maximum Male Models. Mm hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten matches so far. Marseille and Mansois. I'll see what I can get through. Collision on Saturday. A stacked card. 
How stacked. Orange Cassidy versus Johnny TV and FTR in action. Now, I'm, I'll be happy to be proven wrong, but I, I know where this is going. Okay. FTR beats some jobber team mm-hmm. so we can pad their record to yep. get them ready for a title shot. Oh, God, are we bringing records into this now? I hope not, but you got to get some wins. I mean, the Young Bucks are the EVPs. They can just declare this, can't they? They've been moving in this direction anyway. Well, we don't have ratings, but like they, they weren't going to do Hikaru Shida versus Britt Baker until they brought Hikaru Shida back to get a random win the wow. weekend before. So we got to get some random wins for FTR. And then we already went over Battle of the Belt. So that's the lineup for the big shows coming up this weekend. There's definitely a lot. You ready for Bloodsport 11? That's coming up Sunday. Yeah, not ready for it. There's too not... much. There's no, no way I'm going to be able to watch it. Did, I'm, Tom didn't ask you to come down to Vegas and help him train for... No. He knew Creed. he would lose if that happened. Brother Brutus Creed? This person says, do you think Rampage will likely get canceled if AEW moves more of its focus to streaming and max programming? Well, AEW's focus is not... uh, It's either going to get canceled or not. I mean, they can focus whatever they want on whatever, but they're going to make a deal probably with WBD. And if WBD renews Rampage, Collision, and Dynamite, then it's going to continue on. And, you know, these shows... They listen. Here's the thing with these shows. It depends on what's part of this new deal. The shows don't do badly for shows. If you want to compare them year over year, or compare, you know, Collision to SmackDown, then yeah, you can you can say they're doing terribly. But if you compare them to the time slot, how they do in that time slot, you know, where are they in the top five, top ten that night? What they're worth against? They do very very well. You know, you got to factor that in, too, because they pay for production or TNT throws in on that. Is it worth it to them? So, you know, it's really it's a moot argument right now. It just depends on what they get out of their deal and how many hours it is. It is completely superfluous, but they don't want to obviously lose an hour because they're getting paid for it. You know, would they be better off with four? Probably. But then again... Do they want to do something on True TV? Do they want to, you know, what does WBD want out of this deal? Obviously, Tony really wants to work with WBD. He has always been really loyal to WBD. So it's going to be maybe one of the situations where whatever gets wagged by WBD, that's what AEW is going to do. And that's how that's going to work. And by the way, WBD, apparently for a cash strap company going into a lawsuit, which I guess is no surprise, suing over the NBA deal with Amazon. So, you know, they may get a big payout out of that, which, again, may indirectly help AEW down the line. 1-800-878-7529. Phone lines are open. So give us a call. This person says, I know you have people you wouldn't wrestle, Brian, but is there a match type that you will never wrestle? Also, for Mike, is there a match type you would not watch? Well, dude, I ain't doing anything involving thumbtacks, glass, any of that crap. Ridiculous. Barbed wire. Never. That's my answer. Is there any type of match Mike won't watch? Uh, Mike, any Mike will the, watch uh, anything, brother. Any of the customs that Brian's had ordered to his house, I probably wouldn't watch any of those and, and wouldn't dare get near any of them. Anything that I hear has a syringe, no. No, I'm not watching that. Not watching that. Staple and, gun, you kidding me? No chance. Well, yeah. It, <laughs> and you know what? Staple guns are now a part of you know regular AEW programming when they do something incredible or in something crazy. So, I mean, everything at this point has pretty much been out there, but I don't, again, things like har- really hardcore matches on promotions I don't know. I usually don't want to watch anything like that because usually nothing good ever comes from it. So that and syringes, no buys. Yeah, nothing nothing that punctures. You know that's bad for you? Yeah. To get punctured? It's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. good. Don't like needles. This person here says, have you heard of the uh, funny idea going around that they might reverse Montreal Screwjob Danielson to get the belt on him? What? Well, what 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 the the joke is that is he doesn't want the title, but they want him to be the champion. Oh, 
Brian's winning the title and he's all in. Now I don't know what they're going to do after that. I have no idea. You know what? Maybe Tony is such a big HBO fan, and again, his loyalty with WBD, maybe they are playing 4D chess. This is an actual an episode of Daniel Bryan's, uh, Brian Danielson's own Curb Your Enthusiasm or something like that, where so at some point we're going to be see behind-the-scenes documentary footage of him going around and all of this talk happening. It just... It is so ridiculous, and now people coming up with their own storylines as to what Brian Danielson is going to do and what his actual real thought process is and his contracts and everything else. I mean, I guess it was a way to get people talking, I guess. What is this? I don't know. This is the oddest email I've gotten in a while. Hmm. Confirming your cancellation at Fogo de Chao, Portland. Well, I didn't... I, I didn't uh, what's this now? Oh, yeah, really? Actually, is there some sort of uh, American Greed segment that we got going on here? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Has your information been stolen? Hey, where's all the callers? It's Fun Friday. What's going on here? Nobody wants to call today? 1-800-878-PLAY. You're running out of time. Portland, huh? Do I got to read more of these these text messages? 425-780-7566 is the text message line. Call 1-800-SAID. I'm trying to give the the number, and you're, you're stepping all over me. 1-800-878-7529. 1-800-878-PLAY. No, Maybe I can't I take another it. Lenny call. Give it a few weeks. Oh. Would you it. rather take a... Would you take the tree slam or the Alabama slam onto a pile of pillows or marshmallows? I would take it into a foam pit, but not, not even pillows. Something's going to go wrong with those pillows. And marshmallows, no chance. You know, spread a bunch of marshmallows on the ground, and I'm going to take a bump in the marshmallows? No. Foam pit or nothing. Not even a trampoline. Break my neck even worse on a trampoline. What if it's a foam pit of marshmallows? That's what a foam pit is. What's the bloodiest wrestling injury you've seen in person? Jericho's chest on Wednesday. Oh, will you stop? It's actually not. Hey, we got a caller. Paul in St. Charles, Missouri. What's going on? Hey, I was just wondering. First off, I love your show. Brian, you and Mike are great. Thank you. What's your favorite storyline going on right now? I hate Dominic, but I love the him with, uh, what's her name? Liv. Liv. Yeah. It's great. I, yeah. it's, it's great. All right. What do you well, guys think? Okay, thank you very much for the call. Yeah, let's give a... We got a caller! Hey. And it was a first-timer, too. Yeah. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on this uh, this question. It was Paula. I actually really do like the Dominic storyline with Rhea and Liv. How can you not? I think it's going very, very well. I think that, that uh, Rhea is great. Liv has been great. Dominic is great. And, you know, what I what I really like about it is you just don't know where it's going, but it could go multiple ways. That's a good storyline. Does Dom really not want anything to do with Liv? I think we all think that he does, and he's going to screw Rhea Ripley. But we don't know. We don't know for sure. So I very, very much like Dominic, Liv, and Rhea. And the funny thing is, like, all of the best storylines that you see in, in WWE, and even, you know, it's funny, everybody hated MJF and the devil and everything. That thing did great numbers because it was a mystery. Who's the devil? You know, what are they going to do? And and it did good numbers. People like a good, easy-to-follow, simple story. And uh, and I think that Liv and Dominic and, and, and Rhea is one of my favorites going on right now. I like it. I also like Nathan Frazier and Axiom in the speed title. Or the speed <laughs> tournament in the tag team titles. I like that one, too. What else do I like? Refresh my memory, everybody. What other ones am I raving about? Well, you got Swerve and Hangman on the horizon again. You happy about that one? I mean, that storyline's all right, but it's building up a match we ain't going to see. So I can't say that's my favorite. Punk and Drew actually is great. That's another great one. Yeah, Punk and Drew is great. MJF and Osprey, you know, for the little bit that's happened so far, has been pretty great, and you know it's going to be pretty awesome leading into 
all in. So there's that as well. You know the uh, reason that Punk and Drew is so great, by the way? Because uh, CM Punk has been hurt since January. Yeah. And it's July. And they have found a way to keep this feud hot and actually get it hotter and hotter for seven months when one guy couldn't even work and he wasn't even on TV most of the time. And you know what? That's what brings up everything on the show, including Dom and Liv and why Dom and Liv does not feel as corny as it could feel because everything is going well right now. Now, you can say, honestly, has it been the best thing for Damian Priest as world champion at this time to elevate him into the Drew, Orton, Owens, Punk, Rollins stratosphere? Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, okay? But still, everything else that's gone around it has been going well, and that's because everything right now has been going well for them. So, again, when things move, it's why people remember the Attitude Era, and a lot of it with, you know, rose-colored glasses. It's because the stuff at the top was great. You go back and watch a lot of the rest of it, it stunk. WCW, a lot of it was like that. But, again, things are hot right now, and everybody is playing their position really well. All right, Pat in Knoxville, you're on the air. What's going on? What's up, Brian? I want to thank you for so much fun we're having today. <laughs> exactly. It's Fun Friday. What's on your mind? you got about 30 seconds. Oh, man. All right, I was just thinking it'd be fun for me to hear about one of the funniest ribs that's ever been pulled on you. I know we've all heard the one where you I had know. your pants pulled down and everyone saw Little Brian, but are there any well, other they, ones? They didn't, but uh, thank you very much for the call. Yes, I did, get, I did get pantsed in a battle royal by that idiot Luther. <laughs> you know how happy I was when Luther got thrown off that ramp and bumped through that table to the cement? Did you have a talk to me? I, I cheered. There? I cheered. Leviathan, Paul Lazenby was one of the, uh, yeah, and then it, and then Abaddon, but not that Abaddon, a different Abaddon. They all ganged up on me, but you know what? They couldn't get my underwear off. Three grown men, three times my size, couldn't get my underwear off. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. That, that's enough fun for today. I'm very disappointed in everyone. If I don't get better callers on next Fun Friday, I might lift Ryan's ban. The beatings are going to continue until you start having fun. You don't want me to lift his ban, let me tell you. This is Ryan in Cumberland, Maryland. It's mm -hmm. coming back for you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I will punish all of you. I won't punish you. Hey, that's the end of Fun Friday, but uh, the Friday fun is just beginning. If you're a fan of wrestling, we got SmackDown tonight. Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, Rampage, yeah. Tomorrow's Collision, Battle of the Belts, there's UFC, Bloodsport coming up on Sunday, guy. there's just too much stuff. G1. Stardom, Arena Mexico. Stardom, Arena Mexico. WWE in Japan with Bailey against Mako Satomura. Yeah, I tried WWE to talk WWE about that title. earlier, but you jumped all over me with some question about something. Oh, whatever, bro. Yeah, go ahead. Talk about it now. Too late. So anyway, I want to thank you all for listening here today. Check out WrestlingObserver.com for more. Video.F4WOnline.com for all of your video needs. And if you just want the podcast, just the podcast, Apple Music. F4WOnline.com slash Apple will take you there. And you can get all of the uh, all of the shows. $99 for the year. That's like $8.60 a month if you just want the pay-per-view. So check it out. Just pay-per-views? I'm stalling for time because I don't hear the music. Oh. Yeah. Brandon promised to call next week, too. Good. Anyway, we're out of time. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.